There are three simple strategies that every single memory expert uses to improve their long-term memory. And when you take advantage of them, you'll be able to learn faster and remember more. If you ignore these three strategies, well, let's just say that you are missing out on a lot of potential. I mean, how often do you have to reread information that you already read? Hi. I'm Jonathan Levy, the founder of Super Learner Academy and Superhuman Enterprises, the place where top performers go to learn how to increase their memory capacity, read faster, and live life to its fullest potential. In this video, I'm going to reveal those three memory secrets used by literally every memory champion and world record holder, and I'm going to tell you how you can take advantage of them. I'll also tell you how you can get free access to my newest five day memory mastery course. Just make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon and then keep watching. While it may sound attractive to be a human recording machine, you may be surprised to find out that one of the most sophisticated functions of our brains is actually to forget the useless stuff, allowing us to better access what's important. You see, though your brain does have a theoretical capacity of 2.2 petabytes, it also already consumes about 20% of your body's energy and oxygen, despite being just 2% of its mass. All this is to say that our brains do their absolute best to remain efficient. Two dedicated areas of the brain called hippocampi, one in the left hemisphere and one in the right hemisphere, work nonstop to help figure out what is and is not relevant and file it away accordingly. Ever seen that Pixar movie Inside Out? It's a bit like that. You know, the memories that are being vacuumed out? Well, yeah, we can forget the useless stuff. In fact, we probably should. But if you want to increase your long-term memory, you must learn a new, more memorable, and more interesting way to feed your brain information. But first, let's have a little bit of background. In my other video on how to increase your short-term memory, we discuss the various types of memory, their functions, and how you can improve your short-term memory. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out on your screen or in the link in the description. As a reminder, we learned that there is working memory, the memory used to keep an idea in your head for long enough to complete a single thought while you work through it. There's short-term memory, the memory used to hold on to information for immediate use, typically between 15 and 30 seconds. And there is long-term memory, a generic name for many different types of memory, ranging from a minute to a millennia. This is to say that there is no such thing as plain and simple memory. You see, even long-term memory can be broken down into episodic memory, spatial memory, semantic memory, and many, many more. In all truth, memory is this extremely complex thing and one that neuroscientists and psychologists still don't completely understand. Luckily, I'm here to break down some basic, basic neuroscience for you so that you can actually use and apply it towards improving your long-term memory. Because that's something we actually can do. As we concluded in the previous video, all other forms of memory improvement pale in comparison to the importance of improving your long-term memory. In fact, the only real lasting changes to memory are the ones performed on long-term memory and recent scientific research by Radboud University have proven that these effects are not only trainable, but they are also dramatic and long lasting. In a sense, the best way to improve your memory isn't to hack your brain into having a better working and short-term memory, it's to set yourself up to feed the right kinds of memories into your long-term memory and to keep them there. So how do you actually do it? In this video, I will share with you the memory secrets used by literally every memory champion and world record holder out there. Really? All of them, you might ask? Surely there are other ways to skin a cat, right? Nope. In this case, the experts all agree, except for a very, very rare few exceptions, such as Kim Peek, otherwise known as the Rain Man, whose corpus callosum did not attach his left and right hemispheres, just about every single person in history who has performed incredible feats of memory uses these exact three techniques in one way, shape, or form. 
Should you wish to upgrade your memory, you will be no exception. The first step to enhancing your memory is to learn to visualize. As we've covered in previous videos on this channel, our brains remember images well. Really, really well. You've probably heard it said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, this has a few meanings. Sure, a picture is the fastest way for us to convey information. I mean, just think about all the emotion, color, context, and complexity that you can convey with one simple image. But what most people fail to realize is that a picture is the absolute best way to remember that information as well. This is due to something called the picture superiority effect, which states that our brains are unequivocally better at remembering pictures than we are at remembering sounds. Study after study has demonstrated this, and there are quite a few theories as to why this is true. One theory is the idea of dual coding, which states that because an idea conveyed in pictures has both visual and auditory elements in the form of the words we associate with it, the information is richer. Yet another states that our brains prefer pictures because of the evolutionary advantage associated with being able to remember faces, colors of dangerous and nutritious plants, and other types of visual information. Furthermore, there are always interesting studies coming out to demonstrate what happens in the brain when we're exposed to novel visual stimuli. Make sure to check out my other videos linked up for you in the description that fully explain how memory techniques actually work from a neuroscientific perspective and which actually supports the efficacy of picture-based mnemonics. So there you have it. If you want to improve your memory, you must learn how to convert everything that you want to learn, whether it be ideas, numbers, tasks, or anything else, into novel visual images. But what types of images work best? Well, this is another thing that hasn't changed since the days of the Greeks, who, by the way, were the first to discover visual mnemonics. In my past interviews with memory games champions like Nelson Dellis, Ronnie White, Mark Channon, and Matthias Ribbings, each of them have described the types of outrageous, bizarre, funny, and even violent or sexual images that they use to win memory competitions. Our brains love bizarre and unusual, so the stranger and more inappropriate that you can get, the better. The second step to enhancing your long-term memory is to create dense networks of connections, even where none exist. My way of remembering the rules of the accusative grammatical case in Russian involves being yelled at by an angry female roommate in the kitchen of an apartment I lived in years ago. No, she wasn't Russian, and the accusative case actually has nothing to do with accusing other people of things. However, what I've done here is actually a simple yet extremely powerful memory technique called dual coding. Remember how we said earlier on that our brains are designed to selectively forget things? Well, as you might expect, in a healthy brain, there's a rhyme and a reason to what is and is not forgotten. It's a sort of algorithm, and it's described by a neuroscientific principle called Hebb's Law. Proposed in 1949, Hebb's Law states that neurons that fire together wire together. In other words, if you train your brain to fire certain memories together, they will wire those memories together. Practically speaking, this means that if you want to remember something, all you need to do is convince your brain that it's related to something important that it already knows. Whereas your brain will most likely choose to forget a random word that someone teaches you in Albanian, it would definitely choose to remember that visualized picture that relates to the funny story your mother told you last week. By the way, the more important a memory you connect it to, the better. But of course, these connections aren't always obvious or easy to make. Indeed, oftentimes, when we learn something completely new, it can be challenging to find a way that it connects to our pre-existing knowledge. This is where the element of creativity, like the creativity to associate an angry roommate and a kitchen sink with the accusative case, comes into play. And this is why it's important to develop and train yours. In a strange way, becoming a memory master means first learning to create connections out of anything and everything life can throw at you. A new strange chord structure on the piano? Well, that looks like the shape of a crab doing a gang sign. <laughs> the pin code to your debit card? That's a picture of your family sitting on a park bench. You get the idea. 
By the way, it's worth noting at this point that Hebb's law doesn't just apply to biological learning systems either. In fact, this method of learning by evaluating importance is the key factor that made Google's PageRank algorithm so much more effective than AltaVista, Yahoo, and many others in the early 90s. Instead of randomly scraping the web and trying to determine importance, Google applied Hebbian theory, asking what is connected to this piece of information and how important are those pieces of information themselves. Modern day neural networks and AI systems like the ones in your iPhone X function based on similar principles. The lesson here is clear. If you want to remember something, make sure to connect it to your most deeply cherished and unforgettable memories. Now, before I reveal the third secret that all memory champions use, let me know in the comments below what you want to use these techniques to actually learn. I would love to hear what learning projects you have in mind. The third step to enhancing your long-term memory is to use repetition and review the smart way. Unfortunately, having the power to remember every piece of information that you come across simply isn't possible. Indeed, remembering absolutely everything that you've ever seen isn't a blessing, but rather an absolute curse for those who have to endure it because it always comes at the expense of basic motor functions or other crucial cognitive functions. For the rest of us, however, we need to do some basic review in order to reinforce memories in our minds. Indeed, in my interview with USA memory champion Ronnie White, we both laughed at the awkwardness of memorizing the entire list of names of attendees in an auditorium only to bump into that person six months later. Hey, you're that memory expert. Do you still remember my name? Awkward. But understandable. You see, just as our brains are regularly assessing new information for its relevance and worth, so too are they shuffling through old information in search of wasted space. That's why, despite that 2.2 petabyte theoretical limit, you're very unlikely to remember everything you'd like to, unless you devote every single waking hour to regular review. Fortunately, not all hope is lost. You see, as early as 1885, a German psychologist named Hermann Ebbinghaus published a work outlining the importance of reviewing information for long-term retention. By memorizing and then repeating nonsense syllables, Ebbinghaus was able to begin to understand something called the forgetting curve. What Ebbinghaus discovered was that with each successive review of his nonsense syllables, he was able to remember them for longer and longer until eventually they would become simply a part of his memories, like his childhood best friend's name. Over the years, a number of systems were developed to take advantage of this fact. You see, by selectively reviewing only the things that you are at risk of forgetting, you are able to cut down on needless review of things you haven't yet forgotten and maximize your efficiency. This is the idea behind the Lightner Box system, a method for organizing your flashcards based on difficulty and only reviewing the ones that are proving to be difficult. But with today's technology, we can go a step further. You see, with formal spaced repetition systems like Anki or Memrise, you can not only delegate the organization to a computer system, but also become more efficient by training the computer to predict just when you're likely to forget. By using one of these automated spaced repetition systems, you merely need load the information that you want to learn from musical chords to vocabulary words or the bones of the body and let the computer do all the heavy lifting. You can sit back and flip through the cards recommended for you that day, rating by difficulty, and leave it to the computer to float the necessary cards at the necessary time. By doing so, it becomes possible not only to dramatically accelerate your learning of new information by cutting down on wasted review, but also maintain a larger amount of information and knowledge basically indefinitely. So there you have it. The three memory secrets used by literally every memory champion and world record holder. Learn to visualize, create dense networks of connections even where none exist, and use repetition and review the smart way. 
Sadly, it's pretty much impossible that you'll be exposed to some kind of accident at the local pharmaceutical plant, granting you the superhuman ability to instantly learn everything you're possibly exposed to. With that said, it is very much possible that you develop what most would call an absolutely superhuman memory. Want to memorize 50 random digits forwards and backwards? Learn the names of all 250 attendees at your next conference? Memorize the entire deck of cards while your friend is in the bathroom? All of these things are not only attainable, they become absolutely easy with practice. All you need to do is follow these three neuroscientifically proven rules of memory improvement and practice. Thanks for watching. As you may remember from the beginning, I promised that I'd give you access to one of my all new courses on memory training, the five day memory mastery course. So make sure you claim your code by clicking the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any more awesome videos. I will see you next time.